is pooling layer and dropout layer. So after you have crossed that stage of designing the convolution layer, the next step comes is uh, you have to select whether you are going to upload, you know, incorporate a pooling layer or a dropout layer inside your model. So now what exactly is this pooling layer and why do you have to go for it is what we are going to see. So you already know that once you have applied a convolution layer and you have extracted uh, the low level and the high level features on the, you know, uh, or uh, you have extracted the low level and the high level features of the input image uh, and the extracted information is presented in the form of an activation map or the feature map. So now, why you require to downsample these activation maps, okay? So in order to go for this downsampling, especially uh, when you want to go for a non-linear downsampling, then you will go for a pooling layer. So what does this mean? Pooling layer will help you to reduce the spatial size of the feature map that you have obtained after convolution. So it is responsible for reducing the spatial size of the convolved features. So now why do you require this reduction in the spatial size? Because ultimately you require the computational power to be decreased in order to process your data. Okay, so when you reduce the dimension of your data, you will decrease the computational power also to process this data. So for such reason, you will be using the pooling layer. Ba basically, a pooling layer is one of the crucial components of convolutional neural networks. It will help you to downsample uh, your spatial dimension and it will help you to uh, get feature selection, uh, you know, with reduced uh, dimension of your data, you know, in order to decrease the computational power, right? So what do you do in, uh, in this is, you will insert a pooling layer between convolutional layers to progressively reduce the spatial dimensions of the input data, leading to a more compact representation. So what do we do here? We use a combination of convolutional layers and pooling layers and you see to it that you are getting a compact representation of your input data as your output. So this was about uh, your pooling layer and you can see there are two types of pooling that you can actually go for. First is max pooling, second is average pooling. So we are going to see what exactly is this max pooling. So you can see that in this what you will do is you first uh, specify the local region. Okay, you specify the local region uh, in the input basically which is non-overlapping and the max pooling operation is going to select the maximum value of that pool of pixels. Okay, so what you are going to see here is for an example this is your image data and uh, what you are going to do is you are going to uh, apply max pooling operation to this pool of pixels is 7387 so out of this the maximum value of the pixel is 8 so this entire four pixels will be represented as one single pixel of 8 and then next pool of data as 6 because 6 is maximum next pool of data will be 9 because 9 is maximum same here as 9 so you can see an entire 4 by 4 input of 16 pixels is replaced by a 4 by 4 um, sorry 2 by 2 uh, output okay so this is uh, the type of the pooling is dependent on on what value you are replacing these pixels with if i am choosing maximum of all these pool of pixels then it is called as max pooling so what exactly max pooling does it? It helps to retain the most important features in the local neighborhood and it will emphasize the presence of a specific pattern or activations inside it. So that's the area where you will be using the max pooling. Then the next one is an average pooling like I discussed. So within the pool of the data that uh, you have selected, when you take the overall average of those pixels which are present, like here 2, 2, 9 and 4, the average is going to be 4.25. So like that, the entire 4 by 4 input is converted as in 2 by 2 output with the average value of the pixels inside the pool. So when do you use an average pooling? Whenever you require a smoother downsampling and you want to reduce the impact of outliers or extreme values, which is prevalent in uh, max pooling. But if you really want to reduce the impact of outliers and you want a smoother downsampling, then you better go for an average pooling post every convolution layer. 
so now we are going to discuss in general what is the purpose of pooling so pooling layer as i already discussed will help you to reduce the spatial dimension of your input data it will further help you to reduce the computational complexity of your network okay so what exactly is down sampling here it is like reducing the number of pixel values inside your input why do you require it you want to create an abstract and more clear representation of the input but with reduced dimension so that computational complexity is reduced so that's the whole idea behind down sampling or spatial dimension now second thing is translational invariance so pooling layer is going to contribute to translational invariance wherein uh, it will make the network the entire neural network uh, less sensitive to any small translations or any small shifts inside the input data for that reason you go for pooling third is to reduce overfitting which i have already discussed when i taught you overfitting topic because you are reducing the spatial dimensions you are already also reducing the number of parameters inside the network thereby it will help you to prevent overfitting okay so it will encourage the learning of more general features and it will help you to prevent the overfitting and the last purpose is feature selection so by selecting the maximum out of the pool of pixels or average values out of the pool of a picture pixels or the local regions that we call you are going to emphasize only on the important features and you are going to let go of uh, any irrelevant features which is present so it will definitely help you for feature selection as well so this was about pooling layer now talking about another type of layer inside cnn which is our dropout layer you have come across this term dropout when i explained you overfitting to avoid overfitting one of the techniques used is to include a dropout layer in the neural network so what exactly is dropout layer dropout layer is a regularization technique which is used in neural network especially cnns which will help you to pre prevent overfitting and to improve overall generalization performance of the model what you are doing in dropout is it will involve randomly setting a fraction of inputs to zero during training that means what what are you doing inside a drop uh, dropout suppose uh, you have a fully connected network for an example say where each and every uh, neuron is connected to each and every other neuron okay but what do we do inside a dropout is we make sure that not every neuron will be connected few neurons can be dropped out so that you know that much complexity in computation is also reduced it will also reduce overfitting and it will increase the generalization performance so certain fractions of the inputs are set to zero during the training period not in the testing okay so now this was about dropout so you can see very clearly this is the first figure is without dropping where you can see it is like a fully connected layer and the second one is with the dropout so you can see the crossed neurons they are all dropped out neurons so this is how a dropout layer comes into picture inside a cnn if you want to view it okay now we will see about what exactly is happening inside inside this dropout layer so during training period for every update a random subset of neurons which can be input neurons or hidden neurons they will be set to zero with a certain probability okay you will fix define a certain percentage of neurons to be set to zero and randomly they will be uh, set to zero and then this particular process will be applied independently throughout the training example for every mini batch and the fraction of the neurons that are dropped out they are actually creating a hyper parameter inside a neural network which we term it as a dropout rate very crucial okay so this common dropout rate we normally keep it from 20% to 50% that is 0.2 to 0.5 means on an average 20% to 50% of the neurons are dropped out during training now this decision you will take once you check for model's capability if you find that your model is not doing good on uh, testing data and it is doing wonderfully on the training data then you will realize that somewhere your model is overfitted so in that case what you do you insert a dropout layer and you check for your model's uh, performance again okay so make sure that you incorporate certain dropout layer from 0.2 to 0.5 by telling 20% to 50% of your neurons can be dropped out in the interconnections and you check for the result of your overfitted model and 
take the best dropout rate which gives you the best results but one thing which you have to main, uh, keep in your mind is dropout it will be applied only while training okay during inference or during testing phase dropout is actually turned off so uh, an entire network is used for making predictions correct so it is not going to affect your testing it will helpful only to see if your model is overfitted because overfitting may you will get your training results more in accuracy rather than testing so if you you know get a proper generalization with a specific dropout rate you try to maintain that and you avoid overfitting in the model i hope you are all clear why to use pooling and why to use dropout that's it for today's session